Hey everybody, it's Safi and Marco Dish Out on Movies, the only movie review show on YouTube to review movies in terms of food. And if you didn't understand what I just said, uh, we are Safi and Marco Dish Out on Movies, the only movie review show on YouTube to review movies in terms of food. And today I am reviewing Dolomite Is My Name, the new Netflix movie. Well, I don't know if I could even consider it a movie since I couldn't even see it in theaters. That's a whole different issue for a whole different video where I just yell yell and scream and rant about Netflix and how they put movies in theaters only in enough theaters so that they can get qualified to be uh, nominated for Oscars. And so only certain types of people can see this movie in certain areas and then everyone else has to just watch it at home on Netflix on a small tiny computer screen or a small cell phone screen or a small TV screen and so this movie <sighs> I, I'm mixed about this movie because, you, you know, I was really kind of excited about this movie when I heard about it. I mean, it came out of nowhere, and it has great talent behind it. I mean, I actually, this year, I watched Man on the Moon. This year, I watched uh, Ed Wood for the first time, actually twice. And with Man on the Moon... I, th I don't like that movie. I think it's one of those crappy uh, fake comedy drama movies. And if you don't know what those are, it's basically movies that are comedies, but then they, they think that they're better than they are. And so they spend the whole movie like doing this drama crap too. Like you, ha you always have like, oh, you lied the whole time, like that kind of a storyline, like, you're a liar, you're a horrible person, and then there's, like, 30 minutes of, like, melodrama, like, oh, wah, 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 and then the person makes up for it at the end, like, you know, Mean Girls, that type of thing, and so I did not like Man on the Moon, I thought Jim Carrey was, uh, well, he, I mean, he wasn't doing a very good job, he, it seemed like the whole movie was just a project so that he could stroke his ego. And he did a horrible job, in my opinion. Uh, I, I don't like that movie. I don't even want to talk about it anymore. And then, with Ed Wood, I love it. I love Ed Wood. I created a whole movie review month for Ed Wood that we're going to do as soon as we can. As soon as there's an opening where we talk about movies about Hollywood because I, I think that it has, it, it just, I, I love it. I love how it's black and white. I love how there's a lot of comedy, but then there is some uh, reality, but it, it's not like it's trying. It's just there's this dark and depressing reality that keeps on uh, seeping into things and, and kind of... Uh, and just causing a problem and making it so, but it's very inspiring, and and just I I love it Wood, and so I was I was excited about this movie, and you know obviously I have not seen any of the movies that Rudy Ray Moore made, I I mean I I never even heard of them until this year, unfortunately. And the first time I heard of them, I actually, it was from Red Letter Media. And I watched their review of Petey Wheatstraw. And in my opinion, their review of Petey Wheatstraw was a better Rudy Ray Moore tribute than this movie was. This Dolomite is my name movie. This movie's very empty. It's very, well, I mean, it's not empty, empty like it's soulless. But it's empty as in, like... It, it's another disaster artist, but at least disaster artist had a lot of heart and a lot of uh, inspiration to it. Like, it makes you really, really uh, inspired. But this movie is not inspiring. This movie is, is just a fun time. You know, I'm not trying to say that this is a bad movie. And 
because I've reviewed this movie around places and people say, why are you hating on this movie? You're saying this is a bad movie? No. I'm just saying that this movie has a lot of flaws and it's not as good as it could have been and it's not a good Rudy Ray Moore biopic and that's for sure. Uh, so let's start off with its number one problem. Eddie, Eddie, uh, Eddie, Eddie Murphy. Sorry, I was just uh, having a cloud there. <laughs> but Eddie Murphy in this movie, there are some scenes where he really reminds me of Rudy Ray Moore, but then there's a, the majority of this movie, he's not doing a, a good job. Uh, he He's just being Eddie Murphy. And, you know, that's fine because Eddie Murphy is funny, and uh, I like Eddie Murphy when he actually does a good job in his movies like Coming to America, Shrek, and uh, Beverly Hills Cop. But then there's other movies where he just, where, uh, where, he, where he flops, and this is one of them. But, but fortunately, there are a lot of other actors in this movie, and they actually make this movie better because they get their chance to shine. And... Very surprisingly, Wesley Snipes, he was the best part of this movie. I, I, I don't think I've ever seen a Wesley Snipes movie besides this one. I mean, I, I genuinely think this is my first Wesley Snipes movie, and I'm very impressed. He, he delivered a, a serious performance, but a serious performance that was funny. And, and he was just, he was great. Every single scene that he was in, and then his last scene was that, that you, you know, perfect. Perfect job. He, wow. He really elevated this movie a lot more than what it would have been if he wasn't in it. And then, also, the woman the, that he meets and that he makes famous, uh, I, I can't remember her name at the moment because I watched it a couple of days ago, but she did a fantastic job as well, and she was very funny, and she had a she had a lot of heart to her, and and she she wasn't she wasn't bad, and and so, uh, but this movie it's got a lot of cliches as well. That's the second problem. This movie might as well be called uh, the reason why movie biopics the reason why biopics are made fun of because this movie has every single biopic cliche you can think of you know how in biopic movies there's a scene where the main character is sitting there and he's watching something happening and then there's the zoom in on his face or no like he leans forward and he's like really focusing in on what's happening it's like oh this is where he discovers someone, or this is where something inspires him. Like, that's what this, that's what happens. And it's, it's very, very irritating to see that, because it, it feels, it makes it, the movie feel so unnatural when those types of things happen. There's another scene towards the end where they're in a meeting with a group of people, and it's in this dimly lit room, and and the guys who are making a deal with them are like, okay, you know, uh, we've you know we've we've heard your stuff. Let us sell to you, and like we're gonna talk really smoothly and and be really uh, you know smarty and witty and like just this weirdness. These weird biopic cliches where you where you see the group uh, or the person and they're getting their uh, final deal made or they're getting uh, some sort of a sale and and it's like it just so much manufactured uh, biopic drama stuff and uh, surprisingly there's no childhood stuff I think that's one of the things that this movie's missing is heart this movie doesn't have a lot of heart to it in terms of the main character, I mean, at the beginning, it seems like it will. I mean, you see these homeless people, you see this area where people aren't making much money, and they're stuck in these crappy jobs, and, but then, 
the rest of the movie just turns into like this fun comedy. And that's what the majority of this movie is. This movie is not a Rudy May a Rudy May Ray Moore biopic in terms of something that centers on him. This is just a comedy about making the Dolomite movie and also the Dolomite character coming into existence. I mean, really, the, the title is apt for this movie, Dolomite is My Name, because this movie really does not have to do with Rudy Ray Moore. It has to do with Dolomite. And so, yeah. I, I still like this movie, though. Like, it's not like I didn't like this movie. Uh, and it's just I have these issues with it that make me uh, sort of second-guess my opinion. And so it brings it down a little bit. Uh, my favorite scene of the movie was probably the end, the the ending scene. Uh, I I won't talk about that until the spoilers. But I thought it was a very touching scene. It was one of the only touching scenes in the movie, and I thought it was a very nice sort of uh ending scene. It was a nice scene to end on for this movie, and it was a better ending than uh than I thought was gonna happen. And so I thought. They would just have some stupid open-ended ending where it's like really cutesy. And, you know, they do that a lot of some biopics where they have this ending where they're trying to hint, hint at something big happening. And then it's like, oh, this person's going to be huge after the movie's over. And like, no, they don't do that. They don't do that kind of stupid thing. So I give them props for the ending. There is a, a third problem that this movie has. But it's not as much of a problem as other movies nowadays. And there is some agenda stuff in this movie. Well, then again, I don't know if there is or not. I mean, it, it just seems like there is an underlying theme of an agenda of uh, representation. Uh, there's a certain scene in the movie. This isn't a spoiler. This was also one of my favorite parts of the movie. The, the the people, the, the comedy group, they say, let's go see a movie. And, and they go see this comedy. They choose to see a comedy. And they're sitting there, and they're not laughing. And they think it's, it's not funny, and that it's stupid, and that it's, like, really uh, kitty and old-fashioned. Like, this is the comedies that adults get to watch? Like, this is the comedy that kids... Well, I, I guess kids, kids could see it, but, like, this is the comedy that all these middle-aged people are laughing at. Like, what the heck? And and that's really what inspires him to make a, a movie about uh, his character that's so edgy and uh, over-the-top and, uh, I guess you could say, graphic. Uh, but there are some people, and they say that the scene is pointing out how they can't, identify with the comedy movie because there's not black people starring in the movie that's completely false they had they had a selection of three movies the other two movies i believe were both with all black casts and so there's they chose to see this movie it has nothing to do with race it has to do with the fact that the movie's not funny and that the movie doesn't have comedy in it and that the comedy is like something that that's for kids and that like where's this where's the adult comedy where's the type of comedy you can go see down the street in a comedy club you know why isn't that on screen why are these why why do people think these unfunny actors are funny so it has nothing to do with representation this specific scene to me and then I also think this movie actually makes fun of the kind of uh, social justice crap there's this one writer and he's like the local playwright art uh, writer and he uh, when when uh, Rudy first approaches him he he asks him to write his movie and, and uh, you know, he, he has a problem with it. And he's like, wait a second. I have a responsibility to tell people about the uh, injustices that uh, we're facing and all this stuff. And we have to insert all these 
topics into the story and like screw the story we have to tell people about what's going on and and he and he's like no 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 we got to ha- let, let's have an all female army of uh, kung fu fighters and uh, oh yeah boobs let's have lots of boobs in this movie and let's have this and let, like it <laughs> and i love that i love that scene because you know it's showing it's showing the problem with sjw's is in modern times is that they don't care about story they care about racial quotas they care about gender quotas they care about inserting their agendas into stories instead of creating stories with characters that can have smart messaging uh, once in a while or when needed or when necessary for the story and so and then there's another scene where uh well, I, I don't want to give too much away, and this has been a long review, longer than I anticipated. But, you, you know, a, a lot of people said this movie has this representation agenda, and, and I highly disagree. I just think that this movie is uh, talking about comedy in general. I mean, comedy nowadays, the stuff in this and this movie isn't very controversial, a lot of the stuff that's being joked about, but back then, it was very controversial to make these graphic jokes and use curse words and everything and to do that kind of stuff, to talk about sex, and they have this really hilarious sex scene and everything, and nowadays, uh, people, like, they do that all the time. They see that all the time on television, and so I think that's really what this movie... This movie is a great comedy. This movie is a great movie, but it just it fails at being a Rudy Ray Moore biopic to me. But and, and so I give this I'm not going to rate this movie in terms of food because this is not a movie to me. I'm not going to count a movie that I can't see in theaters as a movie. If if I can't see it in theaters like I just don't get around to seeing it, but it's showing near me. I count that as a movie, but since I wasn't allowed to see this in theaters because they decided to make this a limited event, I'm going to just rate this like a television show because it's not a movie if I can't see it in theaters. I give this movie a B-. And so with all that criticism that I gave the whole review, I give it a B- still. I mean, a B- is a great grade, (laughs) a lot better than... Uh, some other people are giving it, saying it's an F movie, and it's like one of the, a horrible Eddie Murphy uh, project, and it's just another failure from him. I'm not saying that. I'm saying this is a, a decent movie that I enjoyed. It's the type of movie you watch on a rainy day. You don't really think about it a lot. You, you kind of uh, forget about it after a while, and you know what? It's a lot better than a lot of the other movies that came out this year. I mean, uh, it's better than the majority of movies. It's in my top five of the whole year. And so that's good. It's in my top five. Uh, And so, yeah, overall, good movie. I recommend watching it, but not really uh, if you're looking for something with heart and something that will inspire you. If you're looking for something that will inspire you or that has a lot of heart, I would say go watch Ed Wood, The Disaster Artist, and also Be Kind Rewind. Be Kind Rewind had the heart that this movie was missing. So thank you everyone for watching. If you like this video, if you like this review, go check out our other reviews. I'm releasing a Garbage Pail Kids review in three parts. There's a lot of drama around that episode it kept the review kept getting interrupted because of the phone ringing and so there's three parts and the, the there's this rant and everything go check out garbage pale kids and also the walking dead reviews i'm reviewing the walking dead i'm reviewing south park season 10 tons of reviews goodbye everybody